Welcome to yeah. Raw Down. I mean, hey, listen, I who's on the pod this week? Who's on the pod this week? We got we got what? Emerald? Emerald's new. Yeah. Look at him. Yeah, look at me. This is episode three for me. And uh, Nico's finally back. No, it's actually Mountain. Oh yeah, yeah Martin Mountain. couldn't make it. He uh, I don't know. I think I think Carlito and Chris Masters have him trapped in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. We'll have to go get him soon. Yeah. What's a famous dish in Tennessee? I don't know. I've never been. Let's look up most famous dish in Tennessee. Have you guys ever been to Memphis? No. Nope. I have. Oh yeah. Yeah, it no offense people from Memphis, but it sucks. It's uh it's some Tennessee whiskey and Memphis pulled oh. pork. Yeah, so okay. like crossing into Memphis from the uh, another state, it's like nice. And then you go like five minutes in and it's it's terrible. Okay, well Martin's Martin's being force fed pulled pork, which is uh not too bad, but then then washing it down with whiskey? I don't think so. We don't need anybody else. We don't got nothing. Uh, we're That's eating right. Memphis barbecue. We're drinking Tennessee whiskey. And we're here in celebration of Shane McMahon winning. I mean, you can celebrate all you want. I know he's a dirty cheat. No, we're celebrating. We got the Saints go marching in. We got the band playing. We got the Spirit Squad going, Yeah, yeah! We love Shane! And then they drown everyone in that confetti. Yeah, that, that confetti was killer. Like, um, <laughs> like, how did they see? As uh, as anyone who knows video editing, probably me, just me, because I have to deal with this bullshit every freaking day. Uh, as soon as like too many particles on screen happen, everything goes uh, milky and uh, dirty, and you cannot see shit because uh, there's too much shit going on the camera. And the camera's confused, especially in 2006. So all we see is just barely Shane high fiving, barely Vince. And the you, I didn't even know there was security until like five seconds after. I was surprised the band was able to continue playing. And yeah, <laughs> right. Just clogged up. It was it was crazy. Like I'm surprised they did all this just for fucking Shane winning at Saturday Night's main event. Truly. Well, it's not just him winning; it's him beating Shawn Michaels. That's right. Uh, Shane is pretty uh, gashed up from that match too. He's got a big scar on his cheek. Should have been bigger. <laughs> Shane uh, Shane gets on the mic and says, "I beat the snot out of Sean, that man baby." Let me let me get the quotes up. That man big baby, that man not the boss baby like Vince. He a big loser because he can't beat the McMahons, and he, the score is three to zero. And then he gives three examples. One where they drugged Sean. I mean, they didn't drug drug Sean. Sean Sean drugged himself, and they pinned him. Twice, so that was up two to zero, and uh, that was the third victory for the McMahons. So Sean just sucks; he can't get a dub to save his life. And uh, Vince looks super proud of his uh, son for the first time and only time in history. So don't get used to that because he won't be proud of him much longer. He says, wow, "My spoilers. he says my greatest creation is you, my son Shane and Stephanie." And then the saddest response. Yeah, no, the crowd did not give a shit about this whole show, which is very unfortunate because some segments were good, but as someone like Emerald, you know, doesn't watch wrestling and hears the crowd bored, you're going to be tend to get bored with them. Absolutely. So, very, very good stuff. Oh, Vince is very happy that Sean is a member of his Kiss My Ass Club. I also humiliated Sean by having him test his urine in front of the people. And because he tapped to Shane clean. Sean Michaels screwed Sean Michaels. I think this was supposed to be meant for somebody else. <laughs> I think I think this was not supposed to be for Sean Michaels, Nico. As uh, reported, they couldn't get Bret Hart to do this any of this shit with Sean. So, fun stuff. Ah, uh, yeah. And uh, even Marty Jannetty couldn't stay for uh, less than a week. Emerald, they had Shawn Michaels' old tag team partner come out to try to help him. And then immediately got hit with a bunch of shit. And he left within the week that he came back. Unfortunate. But he did join the Kiss My Ass Club. And then uh, Vince Mm -hmm. also mentions that I had his old tag team partner kiss my ass. And Shawn kissed my ass. A lot of kissing this episode. This segment went really long, but only f- was 20 minutes. Because then he goes, 
Sean will, will be a morally bankrupt, miserable bastard. I'm going to embarrass him in a no-holds-barred match. I will have Shawn Michaels versus Triple H tonight. The crowd's not going crazy. The band's going crazy. And John Cena comes out to the ring. Vince is mad that Cena kicked a couple balloons on the way to the ring and that he interrupts the boss. Uh, Cena then calls him Darth McMahon and is yeah. upset that uh, Triple H is fighting Sean tonight. Trips keeps eluding him. He wants to fight Triple H and make out with him. And I know that's what we all want at home. We all want them to smooch, but they're not allowing it. Uh, Cena says that Shane and Vince are just playing each other's skin flutes. Mm. If anyone is going to mm -hmm. put his hands on H, it's going to be me. Please. Oh, my. And then, hey, John uh, Cena was hungry. I don't know what was up with Cena's hair, too. It was very uh, very weirdly bald. Yeah, I think he got a too close of a cut this time. A very close cut, and his hair is too light for the lights that are on it. So it looks like he's bald with a little bit of hair just appearing out of nowhere. Vince says, okay, okay, Cena. I'm going to change up my voice for this one. I'm Vince McMahon. You're going to be in a tag team match. And I, I, I want to die. I'm, I'm, I'm sick of fucking tag team matches. I'm in hell. No more tag team main events, please. No, no. more sloppy stakes, Vince, please. We need more tag team main events. I, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Uh, Vince uh, shimmies on home. And does a little little goofy dance on the way back to the, the locker room. That was a long segment. I felt like I had been announcing that for ten fucking minutes. What'd you guys think about this? So uh, when, when Vince when Vince told Shane that his greatest creation was his his own children, mm -hmm. uh, Shane Shane looked at his father and and said to the world, "Ah, oh, you've never you've never told me that before." <laughs> saddest thing I've ever seen. You know what? He's probably right. <laughs> That's all awesome. oh, you know. He, is. <laughs> he probably wrote that and was like, "Damn, <laughs> we cook it." I was I was surprised, uh, happily surprised to see John Cena there. As we all know, he is my favorite uh, of them all because uh, he's a poster child. Uh, he can uh, fight and act, unlike everybody else. Was excited because he's like, "Hey guys, I want to fight Triple H." And then I got excited when they announced, oh, hey, tag team, John Cena, Shawn Michaels versus Triple H and my son, Shane. I was like, okay, that'll be good. Double revenge. Let's go. There will be blood. And then we'll get to what actually happened. Yeah, we'll get that later in the show when we get the tag match. But yeah, I thought the segment was fine, but just went ash long and the crowd didn't give a fuck no too much confetti dude they were fucking playing in that shit throughout the whole show what else do you do oh uh, you thank peter gabriel for having a You're big there. time you go for wrestling and then you got to deal with uh 10 plus minutes of vince mcmahon saying that everything sucks nico i need if your thoughts macho man, if only uh, macho man Randy I mean, Savage was here i i thought it was a good opening segment you know i mean like vince mcmahon it's one of the most hateful characters as like a heel i mean he's he's so good at being a heel and i just thought that like this that you know i don't think this is like standout moment but i think you watch something like this and you just it, you could see why vince mcmahon was so popular like on tv you know just awesome shane was good i i love how like when vince mcmahon put the match together shane just is like looking like please no god why are you doing this you know, I thought it was a good opening segment. Yeah, I thought, it was I thought it was good for what it was. As as I mentioned, Peter Gabriel says hello, and we have 13 days till WrestleMania, which will be a treat for us all. Uh, Shane is backstage, and he's pissed. He's got to team up with his brother-in-law, Triple H. Trips comes in, and he's like... <laughs> and Shane goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Trips. Trips, you gotta you gotta watch out there, pal. And Trips goes, I don't want to deal with Cena, please. I don't want Cena at all. He just keeps trying to kiss me. I'm not comfortable with that. <laughs> and Cena's like, or Cena wasn't there, of course. But Shane's just like, I, dude, fuck off. I don't want to be your teammate. And it's like, come on, big big happy family. And Vince grips them both up by the necks and goes, come on, guys, we got this tonight. 
where one it's like you better have a fucking plan. And then uh, Jerry says they're just like the Sopranos. <laughs> I don't think so. Wish. I don't think they're like the Sopranos at all. And then we get the spinning noise. Carlitos here. Martin. Hello. Martin. It sucks. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so he's fighting uh, World Tag Team Champion Kane. He actually has his belt this time. Uh, this match was pretty rough. Shitty-ass DDT from Carlito. Carlito gets caught in the corner. Like, he jumps up, uh, tries to jump over Kane, gets caught up in the air. And then he slithers out, hits a backstabber, which is his finishing move, and then does nothing with it. He just kind of just doesn't want to cover him. <clears throat> Not at all. Buddy, that's your finisher. Kane uh, gets up, gets up in the top rope, tries for a clothesline, gets hit with a drop kick in midair. Probably the coolest moment of the night, and Carlito whiffed that shit of the night. I meant of the match. Uh, Carlito tries for a moonsault, lands on his feet, but kind of fucks that up too and just falls over. And then uh, Kane just smashes him with a big boot. Sets him up for the choke slam. Carlito thumbs him in the eye. Carlito tries for a springboard and then just gets hit with the actual close, or choke slam as Kane picks up the victory. Match was decent, but the crowd, again, just didn't give a shit. Just silence. Sad and boring. Uh, Kane actually posed with the championship, which I, they've been champions for over six months at this point, and this is the first time I've seen Kane actually give a shit about that. So, you know, I was watching this match, and, you know, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, you know what? I don't think I've ever watched a Carlito match. <laughs> and then <laughs> I had mean? to think. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Then I had to think about it. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm on Raw Down. I've seen every Carlito match that we've, like, through this whole segment <laughs> of, like, Raw Down. And it made me think, <laughs> how the fuck did I convince myself I never saw a match of his? You know what's crazy? <laughs> there was a match of Carlito versus Kane earlier in the year. We've seen this match happen. I know. Oh, my God. See, I don't even remember. I think that's and, when you had the Chinese bootleg. <laughs> truly sad. And I think that's... And that made me just think, it's like, I... I'm now with Martin. I despise Carlito. <laughs> Listen, you don't want to do that. You'll be put in Memphis, dude. You don't want to do that. I, I, I have to. Meals, meals. No, I I literally sat there being like, I, you know, I've never saw an actual Carlito match before. And then I'm like, fuck, I have. They're so forgettable and boring and shit. I can't even remember it. Listen, you better watch out because he's going to spit on you and call you not cool. Not if I do it to him first. Which he stole that from Razor Ramon, so you think I give two shits? <laughs> Fair enough. Backstage, Chris Masters is yelling at Carlito, saying, Listen, buddy, you suck! You stink! Listen, why did you suck and lose? You piece of shit, I'm gonna win tonight. I'm gonna show you how it's done. And then he flexes on him, and then Carlito's like, Bro, we're supposed to be tag team. And then that was the segment. That was it. Well, you f now you forgot. What do you mean? You forgot Chris Masters being like... Because Carly is like, yeah, why don't you show me how to do it? He's like, I'll show you how to do it. He's like, yeah, show me. Yeah, show me. And that sets up him in the big show. The big show. We got a new induction in the Hall of Fame. The Blackjacks. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Blackjack Mulligan and Blackjack Jack Lanza. Great induction. Awesome competitors. Really good old school style wrestling if you want to look into them. I would recommend it. Would you really? Yeah. You don't like the Black Jacks? I've never actually seen one of their matches. Crazy. Go watch them. They're in the AWA. They're in the stuff like ah. that. Uh, I don't. They might have been in the Fed at some point in the eighties. I'm not sure. I think they I know said he the... was with Heenan. I don't know if that's I know true. WWWF. So I think before okay. Junior takes over. Gotcha. We got an Intercontinental Championship match. Shelton Benjamin defending his title against Ric Flair and Rob Van Dam. St uh, stemming off of their little beef from last week when Rick interfered in Rob Van Dam's title match. I'm still baffled that the confetti is falling down at a really high rate during this match. It's still distracting. I'm sure the crowd is just being taken out of this at this point because they were actually pin drop quiet throughout the whole show. They gave a little bit more crap about the Carlito Kane match. It's like it's Rob Van Dam. Rob Van Dam getting no reaction. There's something wrong. I absolutely miss Mama Benjamin. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's pretty much the reason why Joe left. It's like, once he found out Mama Benjamin was gone, he's like, 
fuck this show. Yeah, so is Jerry Lawler, because he said he's going to give a call to Mama and try to get her to come back. And I really hope Jerry did give her a call, and we see her in the future. RVD's shoulder gets imploded on the to- uh, on the corner when Shelton throws him in there. Uh, Rick starts throwing some nasty chops to Benjamin. Uh, belly-to-belly suplex from RVD, which was kind of crazy into a bridge. Like, that was... i never seen RVD kind of do that shit. Spinning back kick gets a one. Rick comes in and stomps RVD's head. Back body drop onto Rick makes him feel droopy and old. And he goes, ah! Rob Van Dam hits a rolling thunder and crushes Rick into the mat. Just flattens him. He's dead. Split lane and moonsault onto another two. Sheldon brings in the title and just gets kicked in the fucking face with it. Somehow Rick is bleeding. Rick just always is a bleeding man. He gets fucking punched in the dome once. He's, ow, my God. RVD hits a savat kick from the top rope. Misses this five-star frog splash. Rick capitalizes with a figure four. And then Sheldon just rolls on in and pins Rick. And Rick had no clue what to do. And Sheldon retains. That was a really good finish. Crowd still didn't care. Probably the best match. I, definitely the mas- best match of the night. I disagree. What would that? What, what, what? Oh, yeah, okay. I, yeah, you know, I'm picking up what you're throwing down, pal. I, I, I don't know. I just thought it was kind of boring. <laughs> That's the problem, though. Like, the crowd just made it boring. Yeah, but, it, and, and they did. And it's like, but I can't really blame them. I mean, it was okay. It, I mean, we'll get to the worst match, but, like, it wasn't bad. Yeah. Do you have any, uh, you have any comments on that match, Emerald? Any opinions? Time? I saw blood! That's it. All right. <laughs> Mick, 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 Mick Foley's walking backstage. He'll be there next, but we got a little Saturday Night's main event recap of the Cutting Edge where Mick Foley bashed Edge's brains in with that concerto. I wish you would have been there, Nico. That would have been your segment. Yeah. Uh, I would have been. Nico, I want you to tell me about this segment. Uh, the Mick Foley one? Yeah. So, you know, Mick Foley comes out. He's pissed the fuck off. And he's going on and on. Uh, Lita gets it, and she's trying to be like, calm down. Oh, my God. Why are you so mad? And he's basically like, oh, what? You're going to come in here try to talk? You want to talk about this? So what? You could slap me, and then Edge comes in and finishes me off? That's stupid. You're stupid. And then he just goes crazy, and he puts her in the mandible claw. You know, Edge, the best boyfriend of all time, just kind of stands there watching, like, what should I do? Well, what's he going to do, dude? I mean, no, I mean, I wasn't being, like, facetious or sarcastic. I mean, like, literally, Mick Foley's putting your, like, girl in a mandible claw. I mean, what are you supposed to do? Right. And, like, just like, just watch it and uh, be in terror, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I mean, if you try to pull it off, you might put you in one. And that you can't have that. I thought Edge was in the, still in Detroit because Lita told me that she, he was, that he can fly and he has vertigo. How'd he get there? Did he take a car? Uh, I don't know. You know what? I feel like, uh, I don't want to say because, like, you know, you know, I am not John Cena, but, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I'll, I'll say this. I Fuck it. No, I don't know. It was a good segment. Like, McFoley's intensity is there. It shows how cowardly Edge is, and I, I think I think it's good to set up for the match. Yeah, I really love what Mick was talking about because uh, he was talking about how he's done with preaching hometowns. He's done promoting his books no one will read. He's up late at night feeling the concerto that from, from a couple weeks ago. Bang, bang, he wants to bring out Mr. Cactus Jack. Just like Chinese food, he says. He's thirsty for more. He wants Edge's blood. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, it was an yeah, it was an awesome Mick uh, Foley segment. Jerry Lawler says that Mick should be the Memphis Grizzlies center because they're always dunking on him. I don't know what the fuck that means. I don't know what the fuck that means. Mick is not even that tall. Jerry's just saying shit at that point. Well, yeah, he's Jerry. Tori Tori starts coming out to the ring, or she's not coming out to the ring. She's in the little backstage area, and Jerry's just barking like a dog and screaming mm-hmm. into the best match of the night in Nico's eyes. I already know it, it's true. And I know Nico wants to tell me about it. Well, hold on. Wait. I'm sorry. Emerald, do you have anything to say about the McFoley segment? 
Oh, I loved the Ammo. McFoley segment. I'm glad he came out and it's like, you know what? I'm I'm in it to win it. I'm out for Edge's blood. Fuck Edge. He's stinky. So is his girlfriend. Lita comes out by herself, so I know immediately. Okay, Edge is hiding somewhere in the crowd, and uh, he's gonna try to get the drop on Mick Foley. I understand that. Mick Foley, on the same wavelength, knew the second Edge emerged from the crowd, he was like, "Uh, uh-uh. uh." Edge backed away, and he grabbed Lita by her jaw. Yeah. Loved that. Yeah. Held her down. Was like. Fuck you, Edge. Come and get her. Yeah, his old his old way of doing it, he was pull a stinky sock called Mr. Socko and then shove that down their throat like that and just grip uh, him up. That's 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 the Mick Foley way. But he did it without whoa. the socks. So it's kind of nasty. Hey, man. She had it coming. She's a fucking cheat. All she does is distract people so Edge can get the drop on her. <laughs> She's a cheat in more ways than one, you could say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I hope uh, Mick Foley uh, kicks Edge's ass again in the future. Fair enough. Women's match. Tori Wilson versus Victoria. Oof. So, Victoria versus Tori Wilson. What a spectacular match, I must say. I think this was, in fact, the best match of the night. (laughs) Fuck you. Victoria comes out. (laughs) Fuck. I don't want to do that. Fair enough. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Sorry. Anyways. So, Victoria's out, and, you know, Victoria's being Victoria, and I'm like, all right, cool, Victoria's good. And it's Toya Wilson, and I'm like, all right, this could be good. Why not? And, you know, so they're about to start the match after the entrances. Candice Michelle comes out on a bed being carried by, what, four guys? And she's just kind of laying on it, and she, like, as soon as, and, you know, Toya's like, what the fuck is this? But, you know, she's like, all right, let's 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 go in this match. And they start the match. And Candice Michelle immediately just starts throwing pillows in there. Now, the story of this match is that Tori Wilson is actually hyper allergic to sudden pillows. So she's trying to get him out of the ring, right? Right. And, you know, it's like she's, you know, there's a little panic on there. And she's like, but, you know, Tori Wilson, she wants to entertain the fans. So she does it a little sexily. Mm-hmm. Which again just shows how what a great babyface Tori Wilson is. Exactly. And you know that vile heel, that slithering snake Victoria, goes in for the cheap shot. Hits her with the widowmaker. You can see her crawling over Toy. Toy realizing that you know it was either her life or her victory. It was a struggle. It was a struggle of should I win or should I lose to win another day. And she made her choice. And when they hit one, two, three, the, all the crowd got together. They cried. I cried. It was a beautiful match. Five stars. It lasted about a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was so fucking short. I listen, was, I was a little upset. Listen, I had that in my notes as negative three stars, but you just convinced me to give it a five star match. You know what? You're right. It was a hundred percent. Correct everything Nico said. Master class. I I didn't even think about the pillows. I didn't even think about it. And like they don't even tell you about. They even said it was a waterbed. How did she stay on the waterbed the whole time? That that's actually impressive that she was able to stay out float like that. No, you know what? And I would give it a five and a half stars. But when Victoria and Candace kissed, I was like, that already happened earlier in the show. You can't do that again. Yeah, we can't do that. No way. That was the first one. Never wrong. Five point five stars. It just—it was even a callback to an earlier segment months ago. Um, it was—it was, it was yeah, amazing. It was beautiful. It was odd. It was odd. This is what wrestling's about. So if anyone tells me about John Moxley again, I'm going to scream. Fair enough. I wish—I wish she would mm-hmm. stop pushing the fact that she was on a Playboy magazine, especially there in the arena, when I can see. Parents with their fucking children in the arena just showing this off. Yeah, but what they weren't, the fuck? They weren't PG yet. Well, yeah, this is TV 14, so. But still. That's the parents' fault on that one. Looks like, like, nowadays, 2023, there's conservative parents 
going all about all this bullshit, not safe for kids. Motherfuckers, you brought your kids to wrestling matches. They were the counterculture at the time. Yeah. Like, you gotta, yeah. When, when the Attitude Era was popping off, like they were like the escape from the conservative norms of the 90s, the late 90s, early 2000s. So it's like a, a separate thing. So all the kids were super into this like edgy content. And now, it came with the, you know, teenagers. They are grown up by this point, so they still watch wrestling. And now they're horny adults that want to look at Playboy. So then they sold really heavily to these teenage adults, like 18, 19 years old, that wanted to buy Playboy. Yeah. So it was, was very nice. smart on WWE's book to do this, even though it is super disrespectful to the women, which is still nasty that playboy was like that around that time but it makes sense from a business standpoint why they would push that so hard because uh they did i think they did playboy up until 2008 and then they shifted to pg and they started being like no let's not sell our women on playboy anymore i think was it was it it china the first one or was it who was it sable not Sable. Uh, um, Playboy? Yeah, like, who was the first WWE? Been... Was it Sable? I think it was Sable. Okay. Unless he was Sonny, it was Sable. Sonny? I don't think Sonny ever did it. Sonny did porn so it later. Was Sable then. Yeah. yeah. Also, fuck Sonny. Real quick, current day moment. She just got charged with, like, 17 counts of her dumb shit felonies, and she's going to be in there for a long time. Fuck her. Uh, yeah, Woo! she... Well, no, she got charged with 17... She got, uh, sent 17 years. My bad. But, uh, 17 years for killing yeah, somebody. But... She got, yeah, she got charged with, I think, four. Four, my bad. I read it. I, 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 I don't remember. Don't quote me, but yeah. No, fuck, fuck, Sonny. It's like, yeah, we get it. You're an addict, but I mean. This ain't the first time she's done drinking and yeah. driving and gotten caught with it plenty of times throughout her life. Rotten jail. <laughs> yeah. I don't know when another time we'll talk about Sonny, but. Never. Fuck it. Uh, one more thing I need to say yeah. before we switch to the next segment. Um, she's not even that hot. Hey, this come on, man. Playboy. Was Sonny? Hey, no, Candace. <laughs> oh, Candace? You know, that's. I feel bad for Candace because, like I said, I listened to a TED talk and it's like she just really loves wrestling. Like, she is not one of those people who went in and it's like, oh, it's a check. She actually really loves the fucking sport. But they make her out as like the ditziest, dumbest, like. I don't want to use their language, but like, you know, bad woman. And it's like, you know, it's like, I kind of feel bad that she never got like a, something a little more serious. She does a little bit later on, but a yeah. injury really took that out bad. I think it was, wasn't it during a, I think Beth Phoenix or Victoria match. She takes a nasty yeah. fall. We'll get to that eventually, maybe in the next 10 years. So because <laughs> it, it's yeah. in the future at least because i remember watching that live and being devastated because i was a big candace michelle fan when she was having a push <laughs> yeah so i i do kind of feel bad about that with candace you, you could tell she actually d- she does love the sport even if right now she's not very good and her gimmick is god awful no end and end playboy bad vince bad rest in women piss, good yeah women good start yeah, pushing well, vince good. bad mr mcmahon good that's the way i'll go <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't just kill Emerald like that. Come on. <laughs> yes, I can. Yes, I can. It's it's legal to kill. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that in. <laughs> Chris Masters versus. Oh, not even that. All right. So the worst thing about this segment, and I know it was a five star masterpiece of a match, but before they even roll her bed out of the ring and out of the way, fucking Chris Masters is posing. On the <laughs> on the apron, ready to go. Like what the fuck? Like I was surprised how fast they were. Like all right, next segment. Next segment. Let's get this out of here. Get these well, women remember, out. Remember, it's two thousand. Yeah, it's two thousand six. They don't respect their women. True. Against World Tag Team Champion Big Show, he also has his belt. Very impressed. Thank God they actually care a little bit. Uh, Chris flexes at the Big Show. Says you're no masterpiece. Uh, Cho just beats the fuck out of him, slapping him, giving him nasty chops. I'm going to call this a certified meat match until it wasn't. So Big Show attempts a big boot on the outside and just fucking crotches himself on the the barricade. Disgusting. 
I thought that was like a big turning point in the match. But then Chris decided, hmm, I'm done with this shit. Grab chair, bonk, 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 bonk. Hit the fuck out of Big Show with the chair and uh, got DQ'd. And then he just keeps hitting him with the chair, keeps hitting him with the chair, puts him in the master lock, shows about the fucking just kick out of it, but then he pushes him into the pole and knocks out Big Show and masters reign supreme even though he lost. Actually, I thought this would have been way more effective next week because it was a good segment and it made Chris Masters look very strong against Show, but they did it too early. So what are they going to do next week? We're going to forget about it next week and when Mania rolls around with this tag team match, no one's going to give a shit. Yeah, uh, I stopped paying attention after uh, Big Show got hit with the chair. It's like, ah, this man, this man cheated. I'm not paying attention. So to the this. bit is that that man has the the strongest submission move in the game that no one can break out of. So when he puts you in the master lock, you're done for. You can't break it. Mm. So he puts it on Show, and Show was about to break it, but then he broke it himself and threw him into the pole. So it showed a little bit of fight from Show and showing that his move could be broken if he really wanted to. So Masters has to, you know game plan against that but did they think about it like that i don't know maybe i'm just fantasy booking because i'm bored <laughs> no we're not allowed a fantasy book on this show you know that fair enough yeah you're right we, we we spit straight facts about what happened that's right i mean otherwise how could we tell you about our five-star match tonight well we, and we get a five-star <laughs> segment with mickey james yeah. so mickey james you know what look it if i was getting married mickey james would be my best man yeah. All right. Explain. Look look at that present. I mean, come on. That's a crazy You're right. Dude, I, if I came like, if I came to my wedding and I saw just a big present like that, but you know, I'd be pretty upset if it was a tied up woman. I wouldn't I want mean, that. I think Mickey oh, would on. be but, escorted out of the building. But, okay, so like if I got you a tied up woman as a gift, it, it, obviously this would never happen. We're all down. We're not those creeps that smack up, but uh -huh. we'll, we'll just say for now hypothetically. I mean, clearly here, it's because when we untie her, to come out and be like, it's all about respect, because I consented to this. And then we'll all clap and cheer. Yeah. I got, I, you know what, maybe. I don't know. I don't know I'm about this. Like Anyways, so Mickey James is like, oh my god, come on out, Trish. I know you're mad at me and you might not want to be friends anymore, but I got you a gift. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, she doesn't want to come out anymore. All right. All right. So how about I give you a little preview? And she has the stage crew pull up the box. Yeah, it's a tied up somebody. I'm like, I'm thinking like Tori Wilson already wrestled. Who the fuck is this? I honestly thought it was Jack. Yeah. Oh, Jack's back. D listen, no, I'm Jack the only one who remembers Jack. <laughs> no, I remember Jack. He's still in jail. I meant the writing team. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we will never forget Jack. I miss Jack. Yeah. Pretty sure Trish would, too, if they wrote her to, you know. Well, no. All Trish knows that Jack was a sexual harasser. Nah. Even though he wasn't. It, he really wasn't. He just shook her a little bit because she was having a breakdown. That was, that was the worst Jack moment. Yeah. Poor Jack. Anyways, so, you know, Trish starts to come out. She's looking a little like pissed like what the fuck is this and you know they review it's ashley she's back whoa where the fuck's ashley been right apparently now. tied up for weeks yeah and you know what welcome back ashley <laughs> yeah mickey mickey does not care about ashley hates ashley i yeah, hate ashley hates that trish psycho well, I'm I'm kind of with Mickey. How dare you have yeah, dare another you? best friend when I should be your best friend? I mean, that 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 that's pretty, you know, that's a pretty babyface move if you ask Mickey me. Mickey just wants Trish to defend her a little bit, like, because what has she really done? Yeah, I mean, what has Mickey done wrong? She's tried her best at almost all time. She, yeah, she made some mess ups. Maybe she might have hurt a few people. She shouldn't have. But overall, I think. It's a little overblown, but you know, whatever. For, uh, it's not my friendship. Who am I? Who are we to judge? Who are we to judge? Anyways, so Trish comes out. Trish gets her out, and I guess while they're like fighting outside the ring, Trish must have bopped her really hard in the nose. 
Because oh, yeah. she's got, and we'll get back to that. And she goes to try to untie Ashley. This does not work, go to plan. And Mickey comes back, basically demolishes this woman. And basically it's like, who are your best friends now? And with the blood, because remember I said she got hit pretty hard earlier. With the blood draining from her nose, she gets a very dirty kiss to Trish Stratus. Copying the original Victoria Candace thing, because that was consensual. This, non-consensual. So it's an inverse of arts, right? Yeah. And I think what we all could learn from this feud is that, you know what? We don't know why it occurs, but you know what? They really got to filter that air out because that lesbian pollen is everywhere. <laughs> Every girl just wants to sleep with each other. It's crazy. What the it heck? It is. The homoeroticism of wrestling keeps Honest. on winning. Yeah, yeah, but as long as I... the women keep loving each other and Triple H and Cena keep kissing each other and even Sean <laughs> wanted to kiss a little bit at the end, we'll get to that. We'll get no, to that. No, I'm no. into that. Yeah. Well, no. so the story with Triple H and John Cena is that they won't let – it's like the bygone lovers who can't kiss. Something always gets in the way. Yeah. Where the women can kiss all the time, which I, I think it's a little sexist, but I, I like where they're going with this. Do you think do you think this would be a Greek tragedy if written back in the like B C times about Triple H and Cena? Or do you uh, think it'd be a Roman tragedy if Greek. Greek, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like Romans had some homosexual tendencies, but they weren't like the Greeks. Fair enough. Listen, I I thought the segment was fucking great because Yeah. Mickey, Mickey was just on one. She was spitting up facts the mm -hmm. whole time, saying that Trish is just using her. Trish was doing all this shit. Um, I love the jumping DDT Mickey hit on oh, Trish. Oh yeah, it was so sick. It looks, it looked so good. Um, that's just like something that you just hit right off the bat, and you just hook somebody that's never been watching before, and you go, that person can wrestle because a lot of women around that time were not that athletic because they were held down from the moolah effect essentially so not a lot of women were doing such hyper athletic shit around that time like no, the biggest you would see the biggest one would be the handstand or the the you know in somersault into the corner because mm -hmm. they they had every woman doing that <laughs> i don't know why just the fact that she just had the blood running down the nose as you know everyone thinks she's a psycho just looks awesome Maybe I'm just trying to find something good in this night, but I loved it. I thought it was great. Yeah, no, they needed this. For for their match, they fucking needed this segment. This was great. It's just, honestly, it, it's only a five stars because, like, that kiss would have been so much better if they didn't have Victoria and Candace Stewart earlier. Yeah. Though, you know what? Never mind. I take it back because the blood, while... Luckily, not, neither of them have, like, an STD. I think the blood adds some more drama to it. Yeah. It makes Mickey a little more unhinged. I like that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's really yeah. good. Now, this was probably the best segment. I could say that, night. yeah. Yeah. What would you think, Emerald? Uh, you know, I don't have any real investments. Their segments are just too short. Not enough fighting. Fair enough. Wow. That, nah, I disagree. But yeah, but what that's about the big DDT? Up. What about the big jumping planting face move? I guess. All right, fair enough. We uh, recap a big time moment of Bret Hart versus Stone Cold. I don't know why they didn't talk about this when Bret Hart was going into the Hall of Fame because we yelled about that on I think Smack Up when that was announced. Like they were like, "Hey, Undertaker versus Psycho Sid from Mania 13. That's a big time." No, that match fucking sucked. This was the match of Mania 13. Fantastic match. Go watch it if you haven't. Bret Hart versus Shawn, or Stone Cold Steve Austin in a submission match. The way to go. Go watch it. Stop listening to this podcast. Go watch that. You don't even have to come back. Just go watch that. Maybe come back. Or go rewatch Victoria and Can and uh, Toy yeah, Wilson. Go back and watch Victoria and Candace. <laughs> go back and watch that from weeks ago. Mm -hmm. That's that's a master class. It really is. I mean, just the tension of that story is excellent, but... Oh, what's next? The main event. All right. So, the main event. So, we have our main event. The tag matches. John Cena and Shawn Michaels, the Heartbreak Kid, versus Triple H and Shane McMahon. Now, 
everybody comes out for the entrances. It, it takes fucking forever. And you know what? Let me tell you this. And I've been waiting, waiting for this moment, right? Shawn Michaels, to everyone's credit, is like, this is stupid. I'm tired of this. So he just runs out and he starts beating up Shane. Or try and chase Shane McMahon, who runs into the crowd. You know? And then, basically, the while he's is. getting held down by security, because, you know, Vince is worried for a son... Uh, John Cena's about to fight Triple H, and, you know, right before he, they could tussle, Shane McMahon comes back and tries to hit him from the corner. John Cena, again, thinking about how much he hates women, <laughs> just gets angry, and he throws an unclenched pit to Shane McMahon's ribcage as he jumps off the post. That was disgusting. How could Cena do it, that? It was one of the most horrific things we've ever seen on this show and i was appalled and even slightly offended i wanted to quit raw down right then and there <laughs> Understandable. luckily vince mcmahon our hero our savior said no you're disqualified get the fuck out of here you're a loser get out of here loser god and he's like we're gonna have and if you mess up my fun, I swear there will be hell to pay. Yeah, Cena got escorted out of there for using that closed fist. And yep. I think we were having a little pre-show discussion. And I want to hear Emerald's thoughts on the closed fist DQ. <clears throat> well, I'm going to start by saying... <laughs> it's fighting! What do you expect? What do you mean they don't... Punch each other with a closed fist. That's all I fucking see watching this shit. Don't tell me they they keep a little, like, crimped, crimped up monkey paw as they hit each other. I'm seeing fists balled up. Spherical. Don't give me that shit. Listen, Emerald. You ever Fuck go to a... You ever go to a... John, you, Cena, John Cena was in the right. The, <laughs> listen, Emerald. You ever go to, like, an amateur wrestling thing and they're they're wrestling each other you don't see them fighting you don't see them throwing fists you can't be throwing fists in wrestling there's no way it'd be bad news you could hurt somebody that's the whole point of wrestling <laughs> <laughs> it's a sport These okay this is a, to this, get hurt. This, this is this is sports entertainment <laughs> this is sports at the end of the day people get hurt in sports what do you think Listen, when they kick somebody in the head, it's different. <laughs> Dios mio! Listen, it's okay yeah. to sidekick somebody in the head, but if you punt kick them, then that's actually really bad. That's a disqualification. Yeah, so, he remember, here's because think of it this way. Like, you know, these, ga these guys throw a lot of punches at each other, right? realistically if it was a closed fist punch there'd be a lot more blood and bruises in these matches the idea is as a sport the punches need to like land lighter right so it's you don't do a closed fist again it'll still hurt it'll be it's kind of more of like a pushback than it is an actual punch in a sense well, right you could clock them good but it's just to keep things you know a lot more fluid in the match See, Emerald, look at look at our uh, our chat real quick. I have an example of a gif of a super kick, which is legal. The first gif of uh, Dolph Ziggler hitting Triple H with it. And then the second gif of Randy Orton punt kicking Triple H, that's a disqualification. That's bad. You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to punt well, kick somebody. So for the super kick, the balance of the leg helps kind of mitigate some of the blows, right? And where with the punt kick, it's your full body into that kick. It's not... You, the momentum and everything. It's too dangerous. It's kind of funny that both gifts have Triple H getting fucking clocked, though. This is true. <laughs> How do you feel about that, Emerald? Ladies and gentlemen at home, while these people are sports entertainers, they yes. are they are fighters and actors. Uh -huh. Yeah, but Vince will never have Terrible you say that. Terrible in both. Hey, they're good at some. <laughs> yeah, you're right. John Cena, great actor. Great wrestler. What about Batista? I don't think I've seen him yet. Oh, he's on he's on SmackDown currently, but but he plays ah. Drax in Guardians of the Galaxy. Hey man, I'm not on SmackUp. I don't watch that. You're right. <laughs> You're right. 
<laughs> Welcome to well, the main event. <laughs> they took Cena out of here, and now it's Triple H and Shane McMahon teaming up against Shawn Michaels in a handicap match. True. Only losers who don't respect women go on Smack Up. That's right. That's right. That's why Joe left. Yeah. <laughs> The only woman he ever respected left, so Joe had to leave and join the disrespectors. Fair enough. You can get into this real main event. That was the fake main event. This is the real yeah. main event. This is so, all the meat and potatoes. Yep. So Vince McMahon turns this into a handicap match. The Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, versus Triple H and Shane McMahon. And let me tell you, mm -hmm. you know what? I love Martin. He's a fellow Raw <laughs> man. I think he's probably... Probably, honestly, the main foundation of this not going to complete shit half the time. But I am glad today he is not here. <laughs> because he would shit on Shawn Michaels, who I thought did an awesome job in this match. Yeah, he stayed up. Yeah, Shawn Michaels, you know, unlike a lot of people even today, I've seen a lot of, like, good matches. And, yeah, the quality is so much better. But there is really not another Shawn Michaels like, he's just selling this handicap match. I mean, it's like he's getting his shit kicked in. I believe it. Even his comebacks, I believe it. There's that great spot where, um, like, he's starting to come back a bit, and he gets chained down, and they're doing the, like, knockout count. And, like, Shawn Michaels is just dead. He's, like, dead. Right? And, like, Shane's trying to get up. He's looking hurt, but he looks like it's, like, you get to the five count, and he's starting to try to pull himself up. And fucking Shawn Michaels does a kip up so fluidly. It was so awesome. And the crowd just went nuts. Which, hey, the yeah, crowd actually way, cared. Yeah, Finally. No, the crowd went so nuts for this match. And, what you know, it, again, it basically was like they tried to beat Shawn Michaels, but he'd find a way to outmaneuver them until eventually the numbers got too much. And as Shane's yelling, put him in the pedigree, the pedigree, like Shane goes up to do like a coast to coast after the pedigree or some type of aerial maneuver. And my God, John Cena, who was told there'd be hell to pay if you even came back or did anything, comes back and interferes in the match. What the goes heck? wild. They're just beating the shit out of everyone. The security comes out, the beating of the shit out of security. They're beating shit out of everyone. And you know what? It just it just goes nuts. It's crazy. It's a good time. The crowd and... is loving it. They are having entertainment before their very eyes. That's what's they all about, They are getting baby. their money's worth. Finally. Yep. It's true. Finally. And, Finally. you know, I'm not going to lie. It was so exciting. I forgot if anyone actually won or forgot it thrown out. <laughs> Uh, Let's look into out. it. It was thrown out? Oh, what the heck? Was it? Yeah, it's and then no contest. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. But I, I couldn't remember, honestly. So, yeah, it became a no contest. And, you know, they're getting Shane out and, you know, Triple H out there. And Vince McMahon is pissed. He's like, Cena, Cena, I told you there'd be hell to pay. And next week, you're not going to fight Shane. Keeps no, you're going to. Between... Shane and Triple H, like, oh shit, I can't make him fight any of these guys. Yeah, and he's like, oh fuck it, you're gonna fight me! You're gonna fight me! And, and I'm gonna crowd, kick your ass! Crowd loses it, John Cena's excited, I get to beat up the chairman next week. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's old. What a, listen, I hate the tag team off. title match, or not tag team title, tag team main event matches. At the uh -huh. end of every show, technically, this was a handicap match, and it was very good. It was very good what? because the crowd cared. It was very good because Sean was selling like a madman. It was very good because they had a story to tell, and it wasn't just can they coexist dot JPEG every fucking week. The heels and the faces fight each other. They don't like each yeah. other. It's yeah. actually st it furthered two storylines. So we got, what, two weeks left to Mania? Yes. 13 days. Yeah. I guess this is my point where I should probably t talk about Triple H and John Cena's main event. Sure. This is the saddest build I've seen to a WrestleMania. What do you <laughs> mean, dude? I mean, John Cena and Triple H are trying as hard as they can, 
But what has been their fucking feud for the spout? Well, Triple H just hates John Cena. Yeah. Triple H wants rough gay sex with Cena. Cena is abstinent and is waiting for oh, the right outside person the, to outside get Outside that stuff. Because, I mean, let, let's itself, be li- dude. I mean, uh, yeah, which is true. But it's like, th- like, there's nothing, like, pushing them together. Like, nothing, you know. The belt Triple is. H, Yeah, the belt. But they're not. But this could be, like, a fucking, like, Taboo Tuesday main event. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's WrestleMania. Like, there's really, like, nobody's done anything crazy to the other one. It's been kind of, it, it's been like that mid-feud before, like, a main pay-per-view. That's that's my point. I can, I can feel that, because now they're, now they're involving the McMahon family into the Cena-Triple H storyline, even though yeah. they're not even evolving their own storyline. It's just evolving the McMahon's and Sean storyline. Yeah, and that's kind of like my point. It's like, you know, it may be like, you know, because like they at first, like Triple H was playing some mind games here, but he hasn't really been doing that. And I was kind of like, I just don't want to fight Cena. And it's like, I get that. But like, we got a few weeks left. Something big's got to happen. Or like, I have to at least maybe try to believe that John Cena's not going to wipe your ass through the floor, you know? But why is Triple H playing the cowardly heel when he's been the dominant one for the past couple weeks? And then Saturday Night's main event, he's he... getting old. He knows he's getting old. He's only John just begun. Cena's the fresh meat. He's only yeah. just begun, pal. Yeah. It, and it's like, for example, his feud with the Big Show was so much better than this has been. I feel like that shouldn't be the case. Oh, don't get me you started know? about that. <laughs> <laughs> At least... There was at least something to give a damn about, and that, those matches were fucking horrendous. But like, listen, I, I already, I already know what the formula is going to be next week with Cena and McMahon as well. It's going to be mm-hmm. Spirit Squad. It's going to be McMahon and his son. It's going to be anyone else McMahon has on payroll. The security team. Cena's going to get run through a wood chipper a week before Mania and lose. So you think that he's going to lose the belt, and Triple H is going to be laughing. And he he hoo hoo ing from the back, you know. Yeah. That's my that's my bold prediction. Next next week, or two weeks from now, if you're uh, listening, you'll and, see it. And where's Rob Conway? Yeah, where the fuck is he? <laughs> and I think you've been raw down. 